Hey everybody, welcome to your full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus tarot reading with a little astrology thrown in with me, Stella Wild and Miss Ariel. We are here to bring you the intuitive information you need to manifest your wildest dreams. So this of course is for all signs. It is timestamped. The timestamps are in the description. I am going to break this reading out by houses. So please watch for your rising sign first and then your sun sign. The lunar eclipse in Taurus is taking place on November 19th at 3.57 a.m. Eastern time here in the United States. So the full moon lunar eclipse is happening at 27 degrees Taurus, and it is directly squaring Jupiter in Aquarius. So as we know, squares are tense energy and Jupiter, Jupiter has a tendency to kind of blow things out of proportion. So it is going direct Jupiter. So I feel like there is a sense here of something breaking through but in a very dramatic way, a kind of go big or go home type energy. Because we know that full moons bring situations to light. They bring things to endings, to culminations, to major turning points. And a full moon lunar eclipse does that on steroids. However, the good news here, even though things may be a little blown out of proportion and a little OTT and dramatic, is the fact that we do have Pluto in a supportive trine to the moon in Taurus. So I do feel when all the dust settles from whatever energy gets stirred up in your chart, <laughs> in your life with this uh, particular energy, once the dust settles, uh, we will see why this happened. There is uh, an evolutionary uh, motivation, shall we say, behind this particular aspect. It's to get us on the next leg of our journey. And sometimes it's really a cliche, but true. One door has to close before another can open. So I'm feeling like there's that sort of uh, energy with this particular eclipse um, but you know, it's an eclipse. We can't necessarily sugarcoat and be just like, oh, everything's going to be rainbows and sunshine. I mean, endings are not always easy, even when they're for our own good. And we know they need to happen, even sometimes when they're under our own control, as you know, it might be at this eclipse for you. So just keep all of this in mind. This, of course, is general readings. Uh, your particular individual situation may be very different. So as I always say, apply the particular energies to your life and use the reading as inspiration. All right, Aries. So this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your second house of money and values. So we're going to pull from this deck a few cards to see the energies around the eclipse time, how you're feeling, what's going on. And then what we're going to do is pull from this other deck to see, well, how is this energy freeing you for the next thing? All right. So let's see what we have for you. So money and values, Aries at this eclipse, November 19th, we have a three of swords and we have a page of cups. Okay. And then we also have a page of wands. So you're getting some good news, it seems, but there there is a little bit of a twinge because the Three of Swords is here. So, you know, this could have been from the past, though. This could have already been happening. Uh, this could go back to Libra season or even later. Could be three years ago as well. So something is getting healed and you're going to be moving on your way with the Page of Wands here at this full moon lunar eclipse. So this could be a way you maybe lost money and you had to regain your, your financial footing. This could be, um, you know, you had to sell something you didn't want to sell uh, this because the three of swords is here. So there could have been uh, some sort of heartbreaking loss. I feel like this already happened, though. I don't feel that's what's happening at the lunar eclipse. I feel what's happening at the lunar eclipse is this that it's getting you out of this situation over here. So we have the Page of Cups, some sort of good news, and we have the Page of Wands, some sort of new action plan that you're going to be developing based on the good news that you're getting. But it hasn't always been smooth sailing with the finances. As we know, probably for the last three years, there's there's been some problems. Um, but I feel like this eclipse is helping you majorly turn a corner 
uh, with some sort of problematic situation with your finances. Now they're pages, that means they're baby steps. It's just getting underway, this new uh, situation. So let's pull, and I mean, this is interesting too because we have Scorpio and then we have Sagittarius as well. So these next two months are really gonna help you uh, get on some sort of new financial footing, new financial road plan, let go of uh, the past in terms of what's been going on with your finances. All right, let's, uh, let's see what we have. Where are we going with this energy? What's coming in for Aries based on for their, for their second house of money? and values what's coming in for aries what's coming in for aries the eight of earth very nice and the ace of air all right so what's coming in for you is some sort of victory and success so this is the ace of swords notice how free and beautiful this horse is and then we have the eight of earth the eight of coins so this is about some sort of new employment so I feel like this is very much about the situation that, you know, one door has to close before the new one can open and a new one is opening up here. So this Ace of Swords, very, very nice. It could be coming, be coming within a week, a month, because we have that Page of Wands energy that came up. So you are definitely heading to pastures new with your money life and how you earn your money with this eight of earth here. So really, really nice energies, but you're ready. I mean, again, look at, this is, you know, also a sword. So it's also about your mindset. Like you absolutely have made up your mind as well to leave whatever this was in the past once and for all. Um, and start, this could also be that you have had to move and start over again. You maybe didn't want to, um, but you're going to start seeing that that actually was the best thing for you. It's going to give you a whole new, fresh outlook on life and on your life. So, and I feel also with these energies that are coming up, you're going to be feeling a lot more optimistic as well, Aries, about your future, particularly in regards to uh, your work. And I also feel because it's the ace here, which to me are, you know, about the self, number one. Um, whatever you're going to be doing next, you're going to be very much in charge of that. And for some of you, because it's the ace of air, it may be self-employment. That's very possible here. Um, so, and, but in, it's going to be, I think in something, something a little different maybe than what you have been doing before, because I do feel there was something you left behind unwillingly. Um, so very, very nice energies here. You're going into the future with some sort of brand new opportunity for yourself. Um, and one that I feel that you're going to be able to uh, put your personal stamp on in some sort of new way as well because of that ace of air. Um, you're going to be communicating in a new way. You're going to be thinking in a new way. And you are really, this is the other thing here too, is there's a real potential here for you to monetize your mind whatever ideas you have, fresh inspirations, again, not grounded in the past, but fresh and new, you're going to be able to make money doing that. All right. So really, really nice energies here, Aries. All right, Taurus. So you, of course, are the star of the show with this uh, lunar eclipse because it's happening in your sign. So those of you in particular born toward the very end of Taurus season, this eclipse is going to be affecting you very, very powerfully because it may be conjunct your sun. It may be conjunct your Mercury or Venus. Um, wow. Okay. So when we have a big full moon lunar eclipse in our sign, it can really be, especially because it, Scorpio is opposite you, right? So it really can be about this big shedding a layer of skin like this scorpion snake does. Um, this is letting go of some sort of old energy in your life, particularly about your self identity. So first house rules our body first house rules, the way other people look at us and the way other people see us. So there could be also some sh literal shedding of layers, like losing weight. Uh, you could be embarking on some new, new weight loss regimen. Maybe you've already been working on that and you're going to start seeing very positive results. So there's, there's a lot of intense energy of physical transformation on the cards for you astrologically speaking but what we're going to do is we're going to pull from this deck first and let's see what we have going on 
how you're going to be feeling at the eclipse, what's happening. And then we're going to pull from another deck to see where the energy's headed. What's going to be transpiring with that particular energy. All right, Taurus, what do we have? All right, we have a five of wands. So we have a lot of confusion and we have a page of wands. Okay, very, very nice. And let's pull one more, one more card. And we have a king of swords. So we have some very decisive energy here. So we go from feeling confused as if we're in some sort of uh, hall of mirrors here, <laughs> looking at everything every which way and kind of running hither and thither like a chicken with their head cut off. Like you're, you're here, you're there, you're everywhere, but nothing's really getting accomplished. And that's very frustrating for a Taurus. So there could be a lot of internal struggles. There could have been, you know, some things going on that just have not been gelling together. But that's going to be changing at this full moon lunar eclipse because you are going to be making some sort of important decision. You're going to be have absolute clarity. Look at this big full moon coming in. So some sort of message may come in with the page of wands here that's going to help you make a decision about a strategy to move forward with some important agenda in your life. And again, this is about your first house of yourself. So you may finally decide, this is like indecisive going all over the place. You may finally decide, yeah, I'm signing up for that, uh, <laughs> that gym membership. I am going to totally have a revamp of my look. Like I am ready. I, you know, have had so many changes in my life. I, th those clothes don't fit me anymore. I don't like them. It's like the old me. I, so it's like things like that. But you're finally having the clarity with this eclipse to make the strategy for Taurus 2.0, the direction you want to go in with your life. So very interesting. Let's pull from this other deck and see where we're going with this energy. What is transpiring for you, Taurus 2.0? What do we need to know? <laughs> Taurus 2.0. Uh, we have you, King of Earth. There you are. So it's going to be the new you. And the Six of Fire, victory and success. Very, very nice. And I feel like you're going to feel this by the end of Sagittarius season. Probably by the end of the year, if we go the full six weeks. So gorgeous energies here, Taurus. You are excited. You're feeling good about some sort of new direction new uh, course of action that you're going to be taking in your life. And it is, there's a big decision you're going to be making at that full moon lunar eclipse about who you are, what you're all about, and how you want to be seen in the world. And here you showed up. So you're going to, you really want to be seen in a brand new way, in a way that is uh, adventurous, exciting, somebody who isn't afraid to take a, a calculated risk, somebody who's trying new things. The six of fire is very adventurous energy. It's victorious. It's a leadership. So you could also be stepping into some new leadership role in your life in some way. This is beautiful energy, Taurus. So any of this time of indecision and working at cross purposes to yourself is going to be over. And let the that full moon truly illuminate the information you need to make a big, big, important decision and change in your life. So Gemini, this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 12th house of things unseen, things hidden behind the scenes, and also your subconscious. So this full moon lunar eclipse can really help you start to clear out sub, some sub, subconscious programming, some limiting beliefs, things of that nature uh, that you've been really wanting to shift for some time. So let's see see what we have for you. We're going to start with this deck and pull a couple of cards of how you're going to be feeling at that full moon lunar eclipse. And then we'll pull from another deck to see where is this energy going for you. All right. So we have the star. So this is about healing. So there is some energy you want to shift baggage, things you want to get rid of and heal from. And we have a five of wands. So there has been, you've been kind of working at cross purposes to yourself in terms of healing that. You've kind of been spinning your wheels and maybe trying this, trying that, doing this, doing that, but nothing's sticking. Nothing is really happening. You're not gaining traction. 
So this full moon lunar eclipse is going to help you. Here's the six of pentacles, help you make a positive change in your life. So it's going to show you exactly where you have made progress, the, the six, but then the four, which is down here, where you still need to change a few things. So the Six of Pentacles is about balance. It's about the ebb and flow of energy. So you're going to really have some insight at this full moon of some things you have already healed and shifted and some things that still need your attention. But I also feel because there is a benevolent aspect to the Six of Pentacles, a helper aspect that you could also be getting some information or getting a connection or getting a meeting with a new person who can help you bring that balance back into your life in whatever this is you've been trying to shift and heal. So it's very tricky to work with limiting beliefs, uh, our subconscious and things like that. It's, it's, you know, cause it is, it is, it's unseen. It's, it's very murky. It's sometimes very hard to bring those things to light so we can shift and heal them. But this can be the type of thing where you could you could get a good resource, read a new book, work with a new therapist, anything, any of new healer, any of those types of energies to help you get this situation fully rectified. So so you could be finding somebody at that full moon who you uh, relate to and can help you with this situation. So let's see what else we have. Where is this energy going for you? What's going to be the results of you? bringing more balance back into your life and healing and shifting this situation, whatever it is. Let's find out. Gemini. Oh, we have the three of fire. Very, very nice. And we have the ace of coins. Very, very nice. So you're going to be able with patience, the three of fire here, you will find a solution that will stick the ace of earth that will, uh, ground you that is practical that's user friendly uh that you can really get on board with also aces are about the self so i feel like you are going to find uh find your feet find your footing find your groundedness there's something about this energy that is about grounding yourself a little bit more also uh you know shifting like i said I keep saying shifting out of some sort of energetic imbalance to bring yourself back down to earth in a way with this ace of earth that is here. So, uh, and this could also be because the ace of earth is here. It could be something to do with your finances since we also had the six of coins here. Uh, so, you know, the three of wands is very good, but the three of fire is about waiting. We're not quite there yet because we, it's not the four of wands. We're not there yet crossing the threshold to the new life. Uh, but we are in a better position than the two. So we're making forward progress. And that's also indicated by the six of pentacles, as I said. So um, you have beautiful energy here. And I think by the time we get to the end of Sagittarius season, so right at the cusp of Sag and Capricorn, that's what we have here. Uh, I feel like you are going to make a major healing shift and let go of something that, that, really has been plaguing you in some way. Uh, and there could be, there could be really a beautiful breakthrough for you. And if there has been something about your finances, like maybe, you know, there's been some sort of something, a hold up, a block, let's just say, because 12th house can be our subconscious blocks. If there's been some sort of subconscious block going on with manifesting more abundance for yourself, I feel like you may have some sort of very good healing shift and epiphany and breakthrough at that time, right as we enter Capricorn season. So use this energy, as I always say, use the energy to really uh, discover a resource, that's six of coins, that can, can help you heal some sort of stuff that I've already been talking about with this baggage issue. Because I, you're ready for that healing. That's the other thing. So you are absolutely ready to shift out of this. And that's why I feel like this progress can be quite rapid for you. So you, you really could turn this situation around for yourself in, in the, a matter of weeks, which is very, very nice.
All right, Cancer, so this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 11th house of hopes and wishes and dreams, networks and friendships. So let's see the energy. We're going to start with this deck that's going to be in play for you at this full moon lunar eclipse. And then we're going to shift into this deck and look at where is the energy going. So there is a big spotlight on manifesting some sort of wish or dream. Either it's happening, it's not going to happen. Which which fork in the road are you going to take? It's like that type of energy going on here. Um, so let's let's see what we have for you. Like, what is it going to take to manifest this wish? A wish could be fulfilled. And it's going to set you on a whole new course of action. That's another possibility. So let's let's see what we have here, Cancer. <laughs> the Wheel of Destiny. The Wheel of Destiny and the King of Swords. Wow. Okay. And the King of Pentacles. Wow. Which is the Taurus energy. The King of Swords and then this wheel. So there is absolutely some sort of <laughs> some sort of big news the universe is bringing for you at this full moon lunar eclipse it ha could have news to do with of course your finances because the king of pentacles is showing up here and it could be connected with some sort of important legal paperwork because the king of swords is here as well so the universe, but the wheel is here. That's what's so interesting. The wheel of destiny. So the Jupiter, Jupiter is in your eighth house of other people's money. If you have cancer rising, that is the Aquarian, the, the, excuse me, this is the wheel of destiny is Jupiter and Jupiter is in Aquarius. And Jupiter is, as I said, in my astrology intro, Jupiter is squaring the Taurus energy, the full moon. So there's something here about, um, and that's your eighth house. Other people's money is involved. So there could be some sort of big decision about somebody investing in you, you uh, getting money from some source. So this could be from an inheritance, from the sale, uh, like from a property from an inheritance. This can be uh, something to do with your taxes. That's other people's money. Some sort of mortgage, some sort of um, any type of investments. So, but... The wild card factor is here. So there is going to be a surprise, I just feel, at this full moon lunar eclipse for you. Now, I don't think it's a bad surprise because you have two kings here, but it's absolutely the culmination of a situation that's been going on probably for a year or the last 10 weeks or the last 10 months with the Wheel of Destiny here. So, but the kings, because it's the highest suit, right? It's bringing the culmination point. It is absolutely bringing some sort of situation to a head to a conclusion so and there's going to be either paperwork to sign or some sort of big and or some sort of big decision about your finances as a result of this full moon lunar eclipse and this wish getting manifested all right and it has to other people are involved with their finances also all right let's see where is this energy going for you ah it's going here's the emperor <laughs> beautiful and the fool oh my gosh okay so to look at these two major arcanas coming up we had the wheel so some sort of brand new beginning is on its way for you as a result of what gets shaken out at this full moon lunar eclipse and it's one that you're very much going to like look at this look at that saucy leo here with this emperor energy. Look at this lion. Of course, this is Aries energy, but uh, <laughs> you're going to be so happy that you're going to be in charge of making some sort of brand new decision about a new direction in your life. Now, this new direction, it may not happen until the spring. It may not happen until Aries season, particularly if you, if the fool for you represents some sort of new adventure, like moving to a new place, buying a new home, uh, starting a new company, whatever it might be with the funds you're getting over here, whatever's going on with other people's money. Uh, but you're very much going to be in charge of those funds and you're going to choose a new adventure. But I do feel, like I said, the new adventure may not shake out until April or end of March, April, but that's okay because this has to, this, this is getting wrapped up for you. So, wow, very significant, pay attention at this eclipse. This is going to be very significant for you with these three major arcanas. 
So, and the timing really is everything. The universe is working on in your favor, on your behalf, with whatever this timing is. The new beginning will manifest at exactly the right time. Um, this, this can also be uh, very possible uh, if you've been wishing to have some new person in your life because the 11th house is, is wishes. It could be that you have been really wishing for a new partner. Uh, two people may be coming in. Only one will rule your heart though. And there will be a new beginning as a result of you choosing one of these people. So one may be here already, maybe another one's coming in, or since this energy does represent the Taurus energy, it could be an air sign that's coming in. That's possible also for some of you, depending on what this wish represents. But gorgeous energies here, absolutely beautiful Cancer. All right, Leo, so this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 10th house of career and status in life. So 10th house is interesting. Uh, it's not just about career. It is about one's calling and about one's status in terms of one's marriage life. So, you know, this full moon lunar eclipse is going to bring something to a head in one of those areas or all of the above. So a career could be ending. A career could be get beginning. You could decide to retire. You could decide that it's time to leave one profession to do another. You could decide that it is no longer in your best interest to stay in a certain partnership and you want out, you want a divorce, you may decide to get married. I mean, it could go any which way depending on your situation, but it is absolutely a line in the sand with some sort of aspect of that 10th house. So let's see what we have. We're going to pull from this to see the energies at that lunar eclipse and then we're going to pull from another deck to see where the energy is going for you. And Jupiter, of course, is squaring all of this in your seventh house of partnerships. So for some of you, it might it may be, in fact, something to do with a relationship status in your life. Married or not married. Uh, we have the death card. Wow. So something is coming to an end. And, the, and something's beginning. Ace of Wands. Wow. And the Empress. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. I'm getting chills. You know, status in life can also be, I mean, we could, we could also say, are you, uh, do you have children or you don't have children? That's a status in life also. Now, yes, children are ruled by the fifth house, but again, it's status in life. Some of you, there's something here about becoming pregnant. Now I know not everybody uh, who watches the channel is, is of childbearing age or wants children, but I'm going to read this a couple different ways. We have absolutely something coming to a head and changing forever with the death card here at this full moon lunar eclipse. But then we have the Ace of Wands, which is new life and new beginnings. And then we have the Empress. She's pregnant. So some of you, the change in status may be that you are indeed going to be literally pregnant. Others of you, you may be pregnant with a new possibility in your life for your career. So one door closes, another door opens opens very fast, very, very fast, Leo. I would say in Sagittarius, it opens that fast. And you're opening the door. Look, there's your little hand and you're opening the door. You are lighting your own way forward into some sort of new situation for yourself, for your career. Empress is not just about love. She's also about money. So you're nurture. You may have even been already nurturing some sort of new creative idea Maybe it, you just hadn't had time to get it off the ground or you were busy working some other job or whatever the case may be. But here we have permanent change and an exciting, exciting new beginning that can lead, it's the Empress, can lead to substantial financial reward for you. Now, the Empress does not manifest things overnight. She takes time to nurture the opportunity. For me, I look at this as... Uh, the third month. So I look at it as Pisces energy. Other people look at it as Taurus or Libra, but I think by the time we get to Pisces season, you could be in a very exciting new situation for yourself. You are pregnant with possibilities. Some of you literally, some of you figuratively. Uh, and this is, so whatever is shifting out, know that 
there is a bright new beginning for you right around the corner. And this may not be easy energy at the eclipse. I'm just saying. However, look at this. Beautiful. All right. So let's see where this energy is going for you. You know, Empress is also wife energy. So some of you may be getting engaged. That's the other thing too. And changing your status. You could be saying yes to an offer to get married. That's very, very possible here with this. All right, let's see. Where is this energy going for Leo? Leo's, where is it going? Leo. Okay, so we have Virgo energy. We have the Hermit and we have a King of Air. Okay, interesting. So there's probably an air sign involved, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Um, there is some sort of deep past life and spiritual connection with this person. Um, this is also, of course, Virgo energy. So there may be a there may be an important turning point as well, and Virgo season. Because remember, we're looking into the a little more into the future with these with these energies. So. Um, I mean, the other way to look at this is you are making a decision not to be alone anymore, or you're making a decision that you're perfectly fine being on your own and you can't wait to be on your own. So again, it depends on what the shift is for you in this 10th house of status. Some of you may be deciding that you're going to work behind the scenes, hermit, alone on some sort of important writing project, communications project something of that nature with this King of Swords. And that's the project you're going to be pregnant with possibility. So some of you, uh, yeah, some of you are starting something brand new, something very exciting, new project, but you're going to be working on it kind of secretly and incubating it. So that may be happening for some of you. It may not necessarily be some sort of big career change. Maybe you already just finished up a big project uh, in Scorpio season and you're kind of ready for the next project and you get a you get a brainwave idea with these energies here and you cannot wait to go work on it. So that may be that may be applicable for some of you as well. Um, so very, very interesting energies here. For those of you, of course, with the pregnancy, I mean it's probably going to be the end of Virgo season. If there's a literal pregnancy happening, baby will be a Virgo. It's right here, the hermit. <laughs> And you may indeed feel like you're going to be kind of like a little bit of a hermit uh, during the pregnancy. You're just going to want to kind of like chillax. So that may be going on. But wow, very powerful energies here. Hermit, Empress, Death card. Wow. So three major arcanas. This is big, big energy, Leo. Positive. I feel like whatever this is, very, very positive energies here. And also with the hermit, I feel like you are going to be on the next leg of some sort of spiritual journey for yourself with whatever gets decided over here. There, there is more spiritual growth ahead for you in a positive way, of course, with this, with this hermit. So, and uh, there can also be with this king of air, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, very much involved in whatever this situation is for you. All right, Virgo, let's see what's going on for you with this full moon lunar eclipse that's happening in your ninth house of the big picture perspective of your life. All right, Virgos. Ariel is supervising. Let's put that one in the middle. All right, what do we have for you, Virgo? We have the seven of pentacles. And we have the Ten of Wands. All right, interesting. And the Magician. Wow, that is so powerful. All right, and we're going to pull from another deck as well to see where this energy is going for you in the future. So we have you at this full moon lunar eclipse making a decision, Seven of Pentacles, to wrap up some sort of energetic situation, this Ten of Wands. You have come to the end of a line with something that, really has gotten too heavy to carry. Like you don't want to carry it anymore. You don't want to do it anymore. You're really done. And you've been taking some time to figure that out. And because the full moon is here in this card, 
you may in fact get some sort of news at the full moon that helps you make that decision. You've been thinking, you've been reevaluating, you've been looking for a sign, you've been looking for the information that it really is okay to let this 10 of wands situation go once and for all. Um, and you are ready, you are ready, but I think there's just one last little piece of intel. And then look at this, the magician. So whatever you decide, is absolutely going to be in your best interest to help you move forward on some sort of very exciting new path for yourself that is very much uh, self-created, self-generated, and will help you use your skills and talents and abilities in some sort of dynamic new way. So you're calling the shots, baby. That's what I feel with this energy. After a time when maybe you felt like you really weren't, you're going to be so much more in charge of the future direction of where your life is headed by, by freeing up space. That's the other thing with this 10 of wands and letting this situation go. You have a lot more things you'd like to grow with this seven of pentacles on this money tree. You have a lot more things you want to do and you're ready to let go of certain things that maybe like you're not into anymore or haven't borne fruit. You're ready to let those go and take charge and go in some exciting new direction. This is fabulous energy, but the full moon will bring that to light. You're going to see what needs to go. That's what I feel. The 10 of wands, what's become a burden, what's become a block for you to move forward in your life. All right. So let's see where this energy is going. Let's look into the future a little bit. Woo. All right. That flipped right over. I'm going to set that aside. I'm still going to pull two cards. That was the three of swords. All right, let's see. What do we have? All right, so we have a four of fire, a four of wands, and we have the wheel. Wow. So for some of you, the, the thing is here with this three of air, this three of swords that flew out, you have maybe been trying to, well, I think you've been carrying some heartache for a while. And that's the thing that you're really ready to wrap up and let go of. You've been carrying it in your heart. You've been carrying it energetically. That's the thing. You've been carrying it energetically in your heart, in your body. Um, and it's, it's, it's been a block. It's held you back. Whatever this, this wound was, it could go back a long way. It could go back three years ago, uh, you've been, you've been trying to do your best here. You have been doing, doing your best with this seven of pentacles. Uh, but like I said, there's more that you want. There's more you can do. There's more you're capable of, as we know with the magician. So I think this, that this full moon, because she flew out this three of swords, you are really ending the cycle of heartache with some sort of situation in your life. And you're stepping out boldly as the magician, the number one on some sort of new path, as I said, and here's your new path. The four of fire, the four of wands is the gateway to the new inspired, passionate life. And you have the wheel, fortune the wheel, here it is. So, and that wheel has been popping in to these readings today. Wow. So the universe stepping in to propel you forward in the direction you do really want to go as long as you take charge and really leave that heartache in the past. What's done is done. You've done all your analyzing that you could possibly do about it. It's time to really shift that burden energetically. And some of you, for some of you, it's literally you need to shift the burden. There may be things hanging around you got to get rid of. If you want your life to open up, right? Ninth house, the big picture of your life. If you want your world to start to expand, this is where Jupiter is right now in a Jupiter. This is Jupiter energy. It's in Aquarius. If you want your world to expand, you want a new home, you want new creativity, you want more romance, you want more passion, you want more adventure, then that's what's got to go. This full moon is, can help you use the energies Virgo to release that past situation and say, I, I can't let that energy be hanging around me anymore. I've got to let it go. There's too much potential for my life that is still left ahead of me. Let the past be the past, Virgo. All right, so you got beautiful energies here going into the future. Exciting new vista opening up for you big time. 
uh, and one that's going to bring you a lot more joy. That's the other thing with this four of wands here. All right, Libra. So this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your eighth house of other people's money, sex, death, taxes, transformation, physical, mental, and emotional healing. It is a deep house. So that could be very intense to have a full moon lunar eclipse in that house. All right, so let's see. So a big wrap up in one of those areas, a big change, a big shift for you. All right, let's see. Libras, we're going to start with this deck. All right, Ace of Pentacles, very nice. And the Nine of Swords. Okay, interesting. And the Five of Swords. All right, so it is possible here that some sort of money news comes in at the eclipse time that finally alleviates some sort of worry and and burden for you so some sort of uh you know sleepless nights insomnia and five of swords we have daytime and nighttime anxiety going on here so five of swords lots of irritations fights arguments pettiness Nine of Swords, people being mean and cruel to you. You stay up at night worrying about things they may have said and done. Uh, this is, can also be a lot of energetic holdover from the past. Some sort of, I mean, look at these, these colors in these cards. Just some sort of depressive energy that you are, look, it's the pentacle too, which of course is the Taurus energy, that you are absolutely healing from letting go of and saying to yourself, I'm going to invest myself, my thoughts, my well-being in positivity and into the future. I am not going to let that past trap me anymore in its clutches, right? That, that five and nine of swords can really be a downward spiral of mental energy. Both of those coming up at the same time. Pentacles I also read as self-esteem. And with the aces, it's about the self for me. So I feel like you are using the energy at this full moon eclipse to reboot yourself and reclaim who you are, what you deserve, and where you're going to go next in life. So remember, eighth house, deep transformation. You've been through a lot of baloney over here. And you're, you, you're coming out the other side. And I think you're really going to see that energy at this full moon lunar eclipse. There could be some very nice news about some sort of financial situation in your life. That is possible. Some sort of offer, some sort of new beginning with your finances. Um, but what I really feel more than that, honestly, is I just feel like you've turned a corner and you're going to be feeling a lot more confident, empowered, excited about your future, particularly with, um, you know, some, probably some sort of financial new beginning. Very, very possible. Let's, let's see, let's pull some, some new cards here. This is also too about staying grounded and not letting yourself get caught up in, you know, mental machinations but really keeping your feet on the ground, staying solid, staying true to yourself and not letting yourself get thrown off course by other people's shenanigans with that five and nine of swords. You know, they were doing a mind game on you. And that mind game goes kind of deep, Go, goes back a ways. So let's see what we have here. I love that Ace of Pentacles for you. That's really a positive new beginning of confidence, Excellent. All right, let's see what we have. Where is this energy going? Six of fire, beautiful, victory and success. And the ten of swords. So you are absolutely going to be done with this cycle once and for all. So notice the ten is here. Ten of air is the swords. You are going to be absolutely triumphing over whatever this represents in your life that you have been trying to shift, you've been trying to transform. It is done. It is finished. We have the five, the nine, and now the 10 complete at this full moon lunar eclipse. And you're going to be spending the next six weeks, six of air here, excuse me, six of fire till the end of the year, establishing some sort of new course of action for yourself, some sort of new direction you want to go in and 
Also, the six of fire is the one in the regular tarot with the guy sitting on top of the horse. So it's like you are going to be looking at the bigger picture perspective of your life. You are going to be choosing things that are going to support you in your future and things that you're going to be in charge of. You're not going to allow your energy to be uh, siphoned off to, like I said, to energetic vampires who like to play mind games with you. No, 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 no. So you're moving on, you're moving forward confidently, excitedly, and you're heading toward, I really feel this is very good news coming for you soon. If it doesn't come at this eclipse, it is likely to come by the end of the year. Some sort of very nice rebooting of your energy. Wands are also about the physical body. So some sort of, uh, also some sort of healing that comes about by getting your energy back because your mind is not being siphoned, you know, your energy is not being siphoned off by this. Getting your energy back, your confidence back, and moving in a very positive new direction for yourself. And for some of you, that may indeed involve a new job, maybe even a promotion with the Six of Wands here. So, wow, very exciting energy here, Libra. All right, Scorpio, so this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your seventh house of relationships. So let's see the energies that you may be feeling around the eclipse. And then we will also pull from another deck to see where the energy is going. All right, so we have the Empress and we have the Ten of Swords. All right. And we also have the Three of Wands. All right, this is what I feel. You know, full moons bring things to light. You may have been hoping that this new possibility, whatever you've been nurturing, if you've been nurturing some sort of new relationship possibility in your life, you were hopeful about it. It was early days because it's the Empress. Uh, it, it looked promising, but I think something is going to come to light at this full moon with this Ten of Swords here. Um, those of you in the dating game who, uh, you realize this is not for you and that's okay because look what's on the horizon, the three of wands, there is something better on the horizon for you, maybe in about three months. So February, March time period there, even with this, the number three here. So full moon lunar eclipses, it's, Eclipses often take things out of our lives that it's it's futile to try to fight the situation. And for some of you, again, it's a general reading. The information may be so in your face here that you can't turn a blind eye to it anymore. And my suggestion would be to just know something better is on its way for you. Yes, the three is here, so... <laughs> you know, there may patience may be required. Here's more patience over here. But also the universe, the three of wands can be about being protected, being safe, safely removed from a situation. Uh, so what I like about this three of wands showing up after this is the universe is actually trying to save you from something that could have ended up as a shipwreck. And it's going to bring a bona fide ship in for you soon. But this could have been a really bad shipwreck. So if somebody leaves your life, if a relationship, business, personal, whatever, leaves your life at this time, it is because the universe is protecting you. Rejection is protection. I know it stings. I know it hurts. It's not fun, but that's what I feel from these current energies. So let's see what else we have here. All right, let's, let's, let's go into the future with this. So we have some other possibility, whoops, wrong card, coming on the horizon for you with this three of wands. Let's see where this is going to lead you. All right, let's see. We have a queen of air, so a queen of swords, so that February, and a queen of earth. Wow. Wow. So this is very clear to me. The other possibility with this energy, I just want to say real quick, because not everybody's in some sort of relationship situation, but somebody you treated 
like a daughter or somebody that you considered a mother figure to you. That's an even another way to look at this energy. Something may come out to light about them that, again, kind of causes you to withdraw or they may even end up, this could be with like with a friend or something like that. They end up kind of going in another direction and it's actually saved you from some sort of situation, as I already said. Um, and I'm also saying that, wow, look at these two queens showing up here. But I think these are time markers predominantly. So we have the February, the queen of air, and we have the Taurus energy, the queen of earth here. I read earth or pentacles as self-esteem. So there is the protective influence here too. Look at this beautiful owl. The protective influence of you standing strong in your power and you know, making, making the decision to listen to the universe, listen to your intuition, listen to the messages that are being brought to you by the universe. And I do feel for some of you, there will be the next chapter unfolding with a relationship situation with this three of wands in this time period, this February to May time period. So but this is very interesting. This is you about you standing very strong in your power and being decisive and with the earth here, being immovable in a way. I mean, you are a fixed energy also, same as Taurus, that that you're not going to put up with shenanigans. That it, whatever you see by the light of this full moon, you're not going to get caught up in it and, and let yourself get dragged down. So... Really interesting energies here. Could have to do with air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Could have to do with Taurus, Taurus, uh, Virgo, Capricorn also over here. So, yeah, I just, I just feel like also with that Pluto and Capricorn, what, you know, which is your third house, Scorpio rising, whatever information comes to light, it is really trying to protect you. Third house is our communications, right? So Pluto may dredge something up about this person, about this situation that is unmistakable. So please, Scorpio, just really keep your wits about you. Keep your eyes open and, and listen to what is being brought out to you at this full moon lunar eclipse. All right, Sagittarius. So this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your sixth house of work and well-being. So let's see the energies you may be dealing with at the eclipse. Here's the moon. And then we'll pull from another deck and see where the energy is heading. And we have the three of pentacles. And we have the tower. Okay, interesting. So there is a surprise that's coming to light with this full moon lunar eclipse about your work environment, the three of pentacles. So we got to see with the other deck where the energy is heading. So doesn't towers not always bad. We have to remember that it could be a very pleasant surprise. It could be something coming to light about somebody considering you for another job, a promotion or raise, a Something like that. Something could come to light about what you need to change in your work environment. There could be a sudden job opening that you might want to apply for. Um, there could be a sudden change in a colleague, particularly a female colleague, could suddenly announce her resignation and that she's you know, leaving the company. There could be somebody who gets fired. I don't think it's you, but you know, there could be somebody who leaves very suddenly. Um, particularly somebody who you may have thought as a mentor figure here with this moon. Um, so very, very interesting energies here, Sagittarius. We got to pull from the other deck, but, um, there is a surprise. There is a surprise and it's going to change. It's, it's going to change the work environment, the work situation for you permanently, because that's what full moon lunar eclipses change things. It's, you really, it's can't go back from that so some sort of permanent permanent change it really could be a surprising opportunity coming to light as well for you with that energy that but full moon something that somebody was hiding from you maybe they didn't want you to know about it and you discover it there's no bad energies here that's the thing i really want to emphasize um 
you could have the surprising opportunity to work with a new group of people that you've been wanting to work with. That's very possible also. It just depends on your personal situation. And I want to see where is the energy going here with this other deck. All right, so let's see what we have. Where is this energy going for you in the future? Ah, the Fool, a brand new beginning. And the Seven of Coins. Interesting, Seven of Earth. So I feel there's some sort of new possibility that will be presented to you, surprisingly enough. And you're going to take a little time to reevaluate it, the seven of earth. You're going you're gonna to have to, you want to leap ahead very quickly with it, the fool. But I think what this energy is saying, just make sure it's what you want, the seven of earth here. So seven of earth is just about examining the pluses and the minuses how much is this really going to be is it going to be worth it for you to put in the effort i'm not saying it won't be i'm just saying evaluate it for yourself in the regular tarot deck it's the one where the guy is standing there with his little hoe looking at the bush so you know and what else can he do to grow that plant and make it even more abundant for himself so that's all i'm saying here from this energy but it does seem that there is some something good that will be presented here, it seems. Um, yeah, very interesting. Just take, the, this is what I feel, just really take the time to reevaluate it. Um, for some of you too, because this is also about well-being, something may come to light that you need to work on in terms of your physical body. You have been working on it because the seven of earth is over here there may need to be a renewed effort to kind of get it going again. You could have had something that interrupted you on going on the right track with it. So for example, if you if you have started exercising, but then the last couple of weeks work got busy and then you stopped doing it, you've made some progress, but you need to keep going with it. So the fool is suggesting get back on the horse, so to speak, get back into it, there's more work to be done. Maybe reevaluate what you were doing before, some sort of exercise health regimen, and make some, some adjustments so that you find more joy in whatever it is you're doing for your well being with the fool here. That it's a little easier on you in some way. You're still getting a good workout, you're still taking care of yourself. But maybe it's it's just more joyful. Don't fit yourself if you don't like to do certain things with exercise. Don't in my opinion, and I'm no doctor, so this is not medical advice, but do do the thing that you actually enjoy doing and would go and do rather than, you know, try and do what the gurus say you should do. OK, but of course, this is not medical advice, but freeing up with more joy after a little bit of uh, reevaluation here, Sag. So get ready. Some, something gets revealed. Some sort of very surprising, interesting uh, information. So let's see what that is. Leave me a comment. Let me know what that might be. All right. Capricorn, full moon, lunar eclipse in your fifth house of love, romance, creativity, children, taking a risk and entrepreneurship. Let's see how you are feeling at this full moon lunar eclipse. And then we will pull from another deck to see where the energy is going. All right, we have an eight of swords and there's your big full moon. And we have a chariot, beautiful. And the three of wands. Oh, is a ship coming in for you, Capricorn? It's very possible. So something that has been stuck, maybe for eight months with the eight of swords here, something that has been held up, you have been trying to get out of this sticky web that you've been in been trying to see a way clear for yourself, trying to find a way out. Um, it seems like you are emerging very quickly from a period of uncertainty, of stuck results or of no results. And big old ship coming in on the horizon here. Here's you, here you are, little Capricorn, standing over here like, here it comes, come to mama, baby. So very, very nice energies here. So this could be some creative project, getting some good news about the go ahead for a creative project. Maybe the creative project doesn't start until the spring, but this could be some good news connected with it. Very possible. 
this is victory this is success this is also something else that transpires as a result of this victory and success so you're finally moving out of some very very stuck energy which is fantastic your mind is open up to new possibilities and also your road is opening up literally to new possibilities so the green light is here and i think by the end of sagittarius season with this with this card over here with the ship the ship may in fact be arriving in sagittarius season so there could be good news that comes at this full moon lunar eclipse that frees you and then there's the next level of development with this particular situation at the end by the end of sagittarius season right before venus goes retrograde in your sign so hmm very interesting interesting energies all right so let's see where this is going for you where is this energy headed so you're finally getting out of stuck with fifth house matter so love romance creativity there could be a cancer coming in with that chariot here they may not be coming in until right before venus goes retrograde if you meet somebody in december don't make any hasty decisions let the venus retrograde period play out it's done at the end of january january 29th so don't make any big love or romantic commitments if a new possibility comes on the horizon. It's not that they're bad or anything. It's just not good to do that when Venus is retrograde. All right, wow. This, this flipped over, the five of Earth. All right, so where is this energy going for you? The hangman and the chariot again wow there's your chariot again and we have hangman and a five of pentacles so double chariot whatever has been stuck hangman whatever you have been feeling left out in the cold about five of pentacles whatever you've just been feeling bad about ivory pentacles is self-esteem so whatever kind of has gotten you down you thought it never happened you felt left out left out in the cold just a little tired and run down and sick of it all. You're just like, is it ever going to happen for me? Yeah. <laughs> all right, here's the chariot. The chariot twice in your reading, it is going to happen for you. Absolutely. And very, very interesting. So I would look to the period of seven days after this reading. So seven days after the eclipse. So anytime, you know, the energies are a little fluid, but the eclipse is the 19th so from the 19th to the 26th also i would look to next july right because of the chariot showing up and i would also look to seven months from december so that's still july okay <laughs> don't ask me to do oh my god capricorn it's been a long day don't ask me to try to do um i was gonna say seven weeks that's what i really wanted to say so seven weeks from the end of that, that puts us into Aquarius season. So seven weeks after the end of Sagittarius season. All right. So that puts us into the middle of January. I mean, February. Pardon me, Capricorn. Middle of February. Okay. I got the timings. So, wow. Interesting too, because the chariot does have two horses in it. So there is absolutely a fork in the road coming for you. And there's evidence of it at this full moon lunar eclipse. There's going to be evidence of it going into the future as well. As I said, seven days, seven weeks, seven months. And with the two horses, you, you really may, have, may be faced with a very life-changing decision to make. I think it's going to be favorable. It's in your control. It's It can lead to a lot of victory and success for you, but you are going to have to make a big decision about fifth house matters love romance creativity relationships personal projects and entrepreneurial activities so get ready capricorn something is about to break loose in your life be very uh, exciting dramatic <laughs> um but you deserve it you've been we know you've been waiting a long time so beautiful beautiful energies here all right, Aquarius. So the full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your fourth house of home, family, roots, 
what nourishes you and what feeds you. So there could be some very significant change going on with your home and family life. So let's see. Let's see how you might be feeling at this eclipse. And then we'll also pull from another deck to see where the energy may be heading. All right, let's see what we have for you. Aquarius, the judgment. So that's the 20th, the day after the eclipse. And the star, there is your energy. Wow. And let's see what else. The sun. Wow. Aquarius, beautiful. Three major arcana cards. So some sort of majorly happy change is on the horizon, it seems. So now there is a decision involved with this judgment card. So, so you, there could be a decision about a new place that you may want to live, about a new partnership, uh, something to do with your children or grandchildren since the sun card is here. There could be something about some sort of healing within the family. There could be perhaps a new pregnancy. That's very possible with the sun card here and the star as well. So there could be a, a child that's absolutely ready to incarnate and is coming in very, very soon to the family. Could be within two months. They may not incarnate until Aquarius season. That's possible, but maybe right around the corner. You know, because Eclipse energy... It, yes, things can, especially full moon lunar eclipses, things can dramatically happen at the lunar eclipse. But sometimes the change may not happen for a month or two afterwards. So that is possible. And since we have the two here with the judgment, and this is the second month of next year and 2022, so to speak. So it may happen also Aquarius season. So some sort of positive change is on the horizon. But with the judgment, there is also the idea, because it is the phoenix kind of rising from the ashes, in a sense, there, there, of course, may have been some sort of letting go first. So some sort of decision you have to make about ending a certain situation so that some very lovely new change can come for you. So let's see where this energy is heading. Let's see. Very, very nice. There also could be a child moving home with you or a grandchild moving in. There could be something going on with that. Or they're finally moving out. <laughs> That's possible too. And so you get your space back. That's also possible. And some of you are letting go of one place of living so that you can manifest the next one. the hermit and the six of water, the six of cups. So there may in fact be something going on, maybe with a ver. if you have a Virgo child, especially a Virgo grandchild, um, the baby, if there's a baby on its way, I mean, the ba news of the baby may even come at the eclipse. That's possible. And then the baby would be born in Virgo season with this. There may even be two babies. Or there's already a child and this next baby is going to make the second child because traditionally the Six of Cups has two children in it. So that is possible also. Or two children are going to get a brand new Virgo sibling over here. So there is lots of emotional renewal with these energies. Even if it has nothing to do about children for you, um, I'm just going to call you Virgo. Aquarius, it even has nothing to do with children. What is going on here is an absolute refreshment and renewal with your emotional roots in your life, whatever nourishes you and feeds you. So more joy, more happiness, more healing, more creative activities that are aligned for you, making your home a very creative place, making some decisions to let go of things that no longer serve you, that drag down your energy, letting the judgment, making those decisions, letting them go so that you can bring more joy into your life. There is a new spiritual journey ahead for you with the hermit. You've learned some sort of important lesson and you're ready for the next new phase of spiritual lessons in your life. The six of cups, some sort of very nice pleasurable activities that maybe you've enjoyed since childhood. Again, 
very maybe gardening even doing something with gardening around your home or more plants i know this is the six of water but we have in the regular tarot the little boy giving the girl flowers and there is a garden so we have you really tending your spiritual garden aquarius and finding a lot of joy and satisfaction in new activities uh, learning maybe some virgo things like i said gardening uh, apothecary healing those types of things so gorgeous absolutely gorgeous energies here aquarius so there is something because the judgment is here just know because a full moon lunar eclipse that there is some sort of announcement because in the regular tarot deck there's that big <laughs> the big angel with the announcement so there will be a, some sort of announcement that you're making somebody else is making about a decision a new life a new direction uh, but it's, it looks very, very favorable. But something will change first, and then this beautiful energy will start to come in. So very nice energies, Aquarius. So Pisces, this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your third house of communications, writing, teaching, speaking, networking, sales. It is also about your siblings. It Third house it has to do also with your daily life, habits and routines, your neighbors, your neighborhood, things like that. So let's see what we need to know about the energies you may be dealing with at the full moon lunar eclipse. And then we'll shift to the other deck and see where the energy is going. All right. So we have, there's a Taurus energy, the Hierophant and the Five of Swords and the nine of cups okay so i think there's some sort of important wish to have a, a conversation with somebody close to you with the the guide here um this could be with some sort of committed partnership. This could be about a commitment. It could be also be a work commitment. There's been something, I think, with this energy here, this five of swords, there's maybe been an irritation, an annoyance. This could even be with roommates, with a sibling. As I said earlier, there, there's been maybe a little bit of a misunderstanding. There's just been something that hasn't been communicated clearly. And what I feel is likely to be going on is an opportunity to clear the air, to get something straightened out. It just needs some maturity to handle it with the Hierophant here, the guide. So as long as both people can be mature about it and be open-minded and not have hurtful knee-jerk reactions, uh, I think the situation can be healed, this Nine of Cups. The wish is certainly there on your part, I feel, to heal this situation. This person may have hurt you very badly as well. You There you, could be you crying in the corner over here. And maybe you've been hesitant to say something. We have two fives here. So, you know, the energy, we know energy runs high at a full moon. So, and with the two fives, it, it does suggest that something is in flux. Something may be changing. But with the nine here, the nine of cups, I think something could change for the better if you can have a constructive conversation. You, I got to pull some cards from the other deck, but... You may have to be the bigger person. I mean, you're already more compassionate and more wise than, <laughs> than everybody else anyway. So you may have to rely on your own um, maturity level, shall we say, with the guide here to deal with this situation. But I think there could be a very good healing over here with this nine of cups. So let's see, but it's gonna be requiring a conversation because this is happening in your third house. So let's see where this energy is going, Pisces. And it's been bothering you. You've been wanting to, to fix it. All right, let's see what we have. We have the Empress. And we have love. So with patience, Empress, and a little bit of nurturing energy... Look at this beautiful reconciliation here. There can be a positive ending to this situation. There can be a rapprochement, a reconciliation. This situation can be healed. So, wow. 
Look at this. Beautiful. So whatever this is for you, this mental anxiety, somebody has said something mean, um, could be dealing, you could be dealing with a Taurus. That's possible here with this, with this guide, but somebody may have also learned a very important lesson and they may also learn an important lesson. If you forgive them, they may learn, they may need also a lesson about compassion and forgiveness. And Pisces, that is something that most Pisces come on, in my opinion, this is my opinion now, most Pisces or somebody with strong Pisces in their chart, they do come in with that Piscean energy to help heal and teach others compassion. So if you have Pisces, well, we all have Pisces in our chart, but if you have a, a planet in Pisces, that Piscean planet helps you, in my opinion, with some sort of spiritual compassion and healing energy that you teach others. You first le usually learn it for yourself, but then you, you end up teaching others about it. So you may in fact be doing that with this energy over here, that through your compassion and, and acceptance and healing energy, the situation is healed with love and also there can be a reunion and also that other person learns about what the true meaning of love and compassion and acceptance is. So very interesting energies here. Um, yeah, this could also be with your mother or something to do with a female uh, motherly type figure in your life as well. There could also be something here around standing up for yourself with love and money matters with the Empress here. Standing up for yourself in a loving way, but also standing up for yourself to bring a healing to a situation as well. Like if you've been settling for less or you've been putting up with somebody's, uh, you know, sharp tongue, um, you know, shifting that energy out for yourself and healing it for yourself as well with this Empress, like being a mother to yourself. You may, some of you, it is possible, you have been maybe looking for some sort of uh, guidance or acceptance from somebody who may not be able to give it to you. So for some Pisces, this may be, uh, this eclipse may show you that you don't need this other person to do that for you. You just need to do it for yourself, love and accept yourself. And that will bring enormous healing to your life and a positive change in your environment as you get rid of these types of discordant energies. So very interesting reading, Pisces. So thank you so much for joining me for your full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus. I hope that these energies gave you some insight, direction, and inspiration to use them to improve your life and manifest your wildest dreams. Thank you again. Take care. I love you guys very, very much. Stella Wild, signing out.